Big Sky Football. This conference is competitive and deep, especially over these past few seasons. At least four teams usually make the playoffs in November. Well, since 2024, let me just say this conference has blown expectations out the water. In 2029, the entire conference was promoted to the FBS, as this was how the NCAA planned to fix the Pac-12 after many failed experiments. Let me introduce you to every Big Sky team. The Idaho State Bengals, the Idaho Vandals and the Kibbe Dome are back, Sacramento State Hornets, Montana Green. Grizzlies, Montana State Bobcats, Northern Colorado Bears, Eastern Washington Eagles, which there's a complete rebuild over on my channel, Portland State Vikings, Northern Arizona Lumberjacks, UC Davis Aggies, Cal Poly Mustangs. This video is going to be a movie as we import an entire FCS conference courtesy of Montana football's dedication to the craft. And then rebuild the lowest overall Big Sky team, which happens to be the Weber Wildcats. For more creative rebuilds in college football like this, subscribe to King Sponge and let's soar into the big sky. Sir Sponge has had his fun rebuilding Monsters University, Bikini Bottom, but I still think he'll have his hands full with Weber State. Out of Ogden, Utah, we're replacing Mickey Mental for the coaching job. And quite frankly, this program is the definition of average. 334 wins, 333 losses, and three ties. Meeting Waldo the Wildcat in our roster, it's clear to see we have a lot of holes. Only one player at 80 overall to the right tackle. Redshirt freshman quarterback Dalvin Hall may be the guy, but time will tell. A couple of young guys here are part of a thin receiver room. Joel Weipler is the truth. Check out this elite dev trait. Number six, starting off at 69 overall. Very nice. Should be in a position to leap forward into the starting role and get his numbers up. Freshman tight end Stan Pitts is no Kyle Pitts. This lineup is lean, mean, and full of holes. Maybe we can start off with some early wins here on the recruiting front. Looks like a couple three stars interested in Weber State as their future landing spot. Actually surprised here at the amount of three stars that really like our school. Okay, unbelievable. I could fill out a full list of 35 if I really wanted to with guys that were interested in our school as their first interest. Is this a glitch? Because I've never seen this before in year one of the build. Before I get into these recruits, I'm going to go ahead and thin it out. Sorted by lowest national rank. I want to go ahead and make sure I got enough spots to wine and dine five stars of course now we're all set to give out scholarships and scout out the guys here's where it gets interesting with 28 guys ranking us number one on their list we're sure to get some insta commits i can guarantee we'll get at least two guys maybe three if we're lucky let's keep going down the list surprisingly no one insta committing as of this moment that's odd i could have sworn we would be in good favor with a lot of these guys and khalil bb the last one no insta commits truly starting from the bottom with no first team all conference bids or second team all conference bids looking to make some initial progress on gordon stingley the number one player in the nation we're actually making good on this prospect caesar good number one in the race only one to offer to ron kramer right now a five-star db with 90 speed i don't know what's wrong the patch is in and there should be a lot more competitors so maybe it's just a matter of a week or two i won't complain just like i won't complain taking on the vandals at home since it is our first First game, I gotta give you a look at the uniforms. Home, away, blackout, away, altered, alternate home with a secondary logo, and then back to the original. So a lot of options here for Weber fans. Even if you are not a Weber State fan, keep it here with us because we're gonna be traveling across the entire big sky in this video, and we will not be done until we win a natty. What I'm saying is buckle into this rebuild. All Big Sky themed and all for national championship glory. Third and short here, scrambling out. We got a man. What was that overthrow? Be ready for some wacky plays and miscommunications because yeah we're not a good team at all yet holding the vandals on their offensive possession we're back into the red zone i got my eye on number six wipler over there that is the elite dev receiver he's young he's fresh and we force it into double traffic there not gonna fly with the vandals looking for a much better drive here with hall 
giving one off to Novak. Just outside the end zone, we can sniff it. Hall scrambles to his right, and he's gonna go ahead and pick up the first and goal. No more funny business. Let's just go ahead and fumble it, I guess. Vandal recovery. That's like 0 for 3 in the red zone. Second quarter action here. That's gonna work to stick our tight end, getting us all the way down. Camarillo looks like he has a step, so let's lead him. Rain is seriously playing a big factor out here in this one. Portilla not able to hold on. And a sack to finish this one off. Maybe Weber defense here can do much better as we run into the tight end. That is surely a pass interference. Vandals play action, go into the end zone. Much better success. A packed out Ogden today. We gotta show up for the fans. The amount of drops right now is crazy. At least we lobbed this one up but not in a catchable position for the receiver. Weber State not looking so hot. 28 to three, Vandals are running away with this thing. If you are new here, yes, we like to provide entertaining rebuilds. And I don't claim to be perfect at this game, but I guarantee you we will play a lot better as the years go on, which is actually one of the most fun parts of a rebuild in my opinion. We're winning every single game here in year one. What type of challenge is that? So the Vandals may get us in this one, but it's a matter of time before Weber State puts their name on the map. The day is not today, 28 to 10. Huge second quarter from the Vandals, and that was all she wrote. Making good progress on the recruiting front. We have more work to do. Next step is to get visits, and I think Texas schools like TCU in Texas are still in the race. So let's go ahead and get something on the calendar ASAP. Good news, despite a sluggish start to the season, Amari Okine, our first commit to Weber State. Jam three-star middle linebacker. Kyler Weil is second on board, and we're still slowly making our way for some five stars. Losing week six was not a good omen for Caesar Good. In fact, it hurt our chances with a lot of guys, including Soma Boss. I'm not sure I have a lesson learned. Maybe we don't schedule visits when we're a bad team. In any case, we found this three-star gem quarterback in Mario Fenix, who could be a good player down the pipeline. 80 speed, 88 throw power, 85 throw on run, you never know. After losing to the Vandals, we lost to Northwestern, Sacramento State, LSU in a close one, and in Northern Colorado. That leads us to right here on the road against the UC Davis Aggies. Montana football seriously put in some work as they too have a lot of alternate options. For us, our Big Sky Roadshow continues against UC Davis. They're three and three, we're 0 and five. I think I know who the better team is, but in this case, we'll strike first. Portilla gets his Wildcats on the board. Looking for a win for this Weber State offense and team. As you might imagine, going 0-5 is absolutely terrible for the fandom. For the fans that leave us now, just don't come crawling back when we're winning a natty. In all seriousness though, the window to still be a fan, you got like, what, three years up in here before we're anything serious. Hall looking to just take the dump off to Klutz. That was a step in the wrong direction. Thankfully, the defense has been able to hold this game, so we have opportunity to get something going. Look at the scrambling quarterback make magic happen with his legs. I mean, come on now, we gotta get excited about something in Big Sky Conference football play. Touchdown, it's Portilla once more. Portilla is dreaming of a Weber State victory. Trust me, I'm all on board for that idea. Just wanna make sure the defense gets the memo. Cause now we're losing 21 to 14. Stepping up into nowhere. Their defender, Zeke Waddy, was the one to bring us down. Our freshman receiver on the other end, Whitebler to the house, tying it up, fourth and 11. Why not go for it all? That's a big six for number six. The game is finally within reach again. I want Portilla to work his magic. Little first down here, little first down there. Let's let Klutz go to work. I mean, heck, all we really need right now are a couple first downs, and then from there, we can kick a field goal. But there ain't no way I'm talking about that right now. This is a fourth down conversion. Going over the middle of the stick, not the good call. And the only stick we got is the one UC Davis thrusted into us as they got the lead out here. That's brutal. Wipler again over the middle. That is the freshman elite receiver. Now with a minute to go, just need to survey, step up, Yo, got hit while we were throwing it. That's gonna be the game. We just threw it away. Number seven, end zone, 
Aggies win. We fall to 0-6. Sad wildcat noises. Caesar Good is going to TCU. But a happy cat in Kenyon Badgent who committed Jam DT. We knew year number one would be painful, but Deron Kramer is going to ease our burden a little bit. Five-star corner. That makes up for the sting of losing Gordon Stingley here in the last minute to SMU. So my boss, we just fell out of good graces. Looking through my board, I just added a guy named Jeff Sands, and he looks like a great addition if we can nab him. Trent Weir, on the other hand, also a good option, and I'd be just as happy with Jawan Breeze, a right guard. If we're going to beat anyone this year, our last best chance here is against Portland State on the road, because the Grizz are a winning team, and you already know about Wisconsin. Portland State was this close to becoming the dynasty I chose for the big sky, so who knows, maybe I'll have to get him right in a future rebuild. For now, it's time for the Wildcats out of Weber State to get to work. The Vikes are just a couple overall better than us, so oh, honestly, on paper, this is our best and really only chance left in the season. I don't know why that speed dig works so well. I guess we can say Weipler has a knack for zipping on through, just like our offensive line has a knack for giving up the big sack. Offensive line always has its fair share of troubles, but especially when you're in year one, there's no doubt about it. Opening drive, gonna need to punt it back. Fourth and goal at the inches line here. It's a handoff up the middle, blown up. Wildcat Nation, let's ride. 0-0 zero, zero game here in the second quarter. We need points and desperately. So what's it gonna be? A little dump off to clutch? Sure, maybe that can get the momentum going. Just need to keep steady after that 7-0 start. Back to clutch, good things happen. Why involve anyone else when you have a safety valve at running back? Clutch just breaks on through, first down. Need to hurry back up to the line there is not much time left in this one so throwing it back up to novak that was silly business especially from a noodle arm quarterback take two going to the out there camarillo good snag you already know it's time to run another speed dig and it looks like it's open i'm loving that play that's my new weber state playbook right here that i haven't really touched with just about eight seconds left up the middle and through klutz pads it on a rare sight to see 17 7 we have the lead in the third quarter Looking to keep it that way. Going to our big tight end. Could not stick it out. Instead, on fourth down, big kahuna call right here. Why sail? Let's let this one fly. Back to stick. He's got it, and he's rumbling all the way down into the one. Making it count right there, and why not top it off to Portilla six. My guy, that is insurance we need. 17 points going into the fourth quarter. Fourth and nine, defensive pressure needed here. Number three's got all day, stepped up and denied. So this is what it feels like to be on the other end of a ball game. Truly an incredible feeling, I cannot lie. Let's go back up to the big stick, yes touchdown can you believe it this is weber state's first victory in school history in the fbs i should say since being promoted of course the big sky was competitive in the fcs led by dalvin hall it only took eight weeks to get here i'm hoping that spells good things for the rest of year one but to be frank it's time to get to year two before we get there i gotta recognize mario fenix gem three star that could be the future especially if we can't land our five star charles tobias end of our first season and yeah things have to change as you can tell weber state State is ranked 133rd for championship contenders. We're going to have to leapfrog every other team in the FBS. Dalvin Hall was not too great. Rushing game did not exist. Only a couple highlights on defense like Dennis, Alex, need to find a way to get more turnovers. Deonny Zeke was the Heisman winner this year for Georgia, and not a surprise that none of our guys got an award, nor first team, second team, honorable mention, nothing. Even early national signing day was a bit difficult. Seven commits at the moment, lost a lot of guys at the end, and then unfortunately deal breakers kicked in for Jeff Sands and Jawan Breeze, so we got locked out. Got an offer to go be the coordinator for Cal Poly, or I could head coach Houston. As tempting as it may be, we're loyal to the Weber State Wildcats. What a wild ride for some of these teams in the bracket here. It ended up with four versus six, North Carolina State, Notre Dame, 13 to 12 defensive lockdown Wolfpack win sadly we're losing some young key contributors Costanzo Novak Pitts no 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 nothing we can do to persuade them with zero percent chance not many options in the transfer portal it's clear to me this is going to be a long and grindy build so sit back grab a snack we are going to need to put our back into it if we are serious about competing within five to six years at least we're starting to snag a few more guys off our our board like Jim Kevin Polanco because the best thing we can do is just go for numbers right now. Stop the press in the final week of the transfer portal recruiting. Raheem Mond is a gem three-star quarterback 
with Platinum Field General out of high school. 92 speed, 86 throw power. I want this as my quarterback. Field General is hands down one of my favorite abilities. You get to pick up the blitz and make adjustments on the fly. 10 out of 10, do recommend. Let's hope Raheem Mahan makes his mind up. Let's go. Raheem Mahan is in there as part of a nice little flurry six signees. Trading results are in. We're up to 79 overall. Stefan Rubin here is a converted quarterback to running back. He's going to be leading the depth chart. I guess the backup just wanted some play time somewhere. Weipler leading a rather depleted receiving room. At least we have more 80 overall players, but still a lot of 70 overall guys that need development or replacements. Sponge has his work cut out for him going into year two. Second team bids here for Dalvin Hall and Stefan Rubin, but to keep it a buck, 72 overall Raheem Mond, gold magician, platinum field general is really tempting to go ahead and start. Heck, Jesse Lacey over here looks pretty good himself. At the very least, I'm going to promote Mond to backup, but there's a good chance I'll let him get some in-game action. With a low overall receiver room, guys like Diego Stoner are not going to cut it. We need more guys like Nathan Radigan, star, 67 overall, 6 foot 5 unit. The highlight of our last recruiting class, Deron Kramer here, 5 star, star. He cares a lot about brand exposure, so that has me worried that we need to win more games to keep him. I want to bring in more dogs just like him, Niall Small, Insta Commit, and Tyrell Flugents, a new kicker. With less prestige, we have to be more strategic. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop whining and dining five stars with our limited scouting points i'm not gonna bother on the five stars because if we can land any of them heck we're gonna take them let's put our focus on three stars looking for gems just like eric polaris a glance at the schedule we start with arizona state before working our way into the big sky eight straight weeks here of action dalvin hall has the wildcats off on a great start two and oh 21 14 against arizona state before taking care of business against fcs west we got one last Last year and now we got one this year caleb harris five star out of inglewood new jersey that's a long way from home i'm hoping his commitment starts to inspire other guys like manny tisdale i definitely want guys like george perizzo so i'll hard sell it hoping that a b minus and c is no big deal in doubt i'll just contact friends and family as well we were losing ground to texas so i had to try something and come on now out of arlington texas george said i'm in that's what i'm talking about db nation stand up crucial signings open up some spots for us let's go ahead and add some of these four stars to the board can you really blame recruits for wanting to be a part of this the wildcats are five and oh literally just one win away from bull eligibility sacramento state is all that stands in our way right now we're on the road getting destroyed on the first play of the game our ragtag group of guys here have turned it around from a two win season last year to five wins already a star under his name it's number 11 ruben this guy was a quarterback just last season and he's converted into running back making big plays man how could you just not get romantic here about big sky football rain is pouring so it is an adverse environment to get things done going to need to rely on a stingy defense as well as a ground and pound offense third down here handed off to ruben bottled up in general it just seems to me like defense is easier to play in the rain and where is he going with that pass i swear the route the pass everything was going to the outside hash mark and that was a terrible throw hall has been doing a good job for his team 5-0 and star i can't complain but guess who's in it's mond because he has 92 speed it's an intangible that hall does not have it'll prove invaluable in moments like this rain game fourth down we can step up and make a play look at that you cannot ask for anything better. Willing to take a hit, can read the coverage, read the blitz. The only complaint I have against him is his arm. It's 86 throw power. I need to see him hit the bicep curls. Regardless, I'm letting him cook here with... 30 seconds left. 5 0 start here in jeopardy. That is no good. We're down 19 zip. Offensive line, where are you? Not one to really make excuses, but this offensive line is not giving me much of a choice out here and my goodness i just had to get rid of it into the hands of a defender the odds were stacked against us in this one no doubt with the rain unless we can score three times in one quarter this one is out of reach what you're seeing this too i can't make it up still need to make the most of the situation here just gonna throw one up to battle needing to make the most of our situation regardless fourth and 23 game on the line here just gonna run a speed dig go across the middle hit while throwing it yeah sacramento state 
These Hornets took care of it. Came back, but fell short 22-14. Safe to say my rain game experiment did not work out. So we'll go back to the tried and true haul on offense. That should hopefully kickstart this offense. Some guys, as talented as they may look, just need experience. Which is why we're going back with Hall here, who picks up the blitz anyway. Misses the tight end. Quickly down 17-0. But hey, how about that red turf? Am I right? It looks dazzling but it would be a shame if the only thing dazzling out here was the field we need to give the offense some razzle not sure why we're having such a hard time getting on the same page maybe we need to change up our play calling just a smidge why not let this one fly to Ruben let's go baby I think we need to come out here find our reliable targets if we have time not it just not it literally just gonna send it here on fourth and 20 already in so much pressure not even gonna go for the one on one ball long last we are in the red zone and ruben's gonna walk the dog get us on the board there's a lot of pressure to keep things alive here on fourth down we found him in between the scene only a couple minutes left that definitely keeps things alive for our unit happily settling for three getting this game within seven and now the defense does a number on the eagles giving us one more chance cannot be distracted here by the red turf need to make some plays and come on just undercut i am shook right now but what i'm seeing it's fourth down and they're choosing to go for it rather than take three points i can't believe it luckily for them it worked out and unlucky for us we fall short again we come into the heart of the big sky and we keep dropping games definitely not gonna stay down for too long when monty hatchet the five foot seven prodigy commits or no that was the six foot five tommy stork is the five foot seven prodigy and you're telling me we have a chance to land three five star receivers what a time to be alive the very next week we went and got him this is how we do it and i'm telling you we're not done yet freddie ferris the number one offensive tackle is on the verge we keep pulling it off and i'm about ready to pop the champagne in year two just after two wins five five stars is incredible i couldn't even pull this off in the rebuild you'll see right before this or after this depending on when i schedule these videos strung out a couple more wins against northern colorado portland state then took a dump against northern arizona seven and three versus seven and three the grizz up next stopping in to see our friends here in montana fourth and two wrapped up throw up the fist fourth down hold and out come the offense hyped up led by hall trust me i'm gonna keep an eye on the development of some of our freshmen that we like but for now this is comfortably david's team continuing to build rapport out here we're gonna go hit up bobber first down a little rpo here just gonna hand it off to ruben a block all the way down the field oh man if he just shed that last guy it was looking nice instead we'll go ahead and mountain swing the running back and damar's got some room this time he's cutting it up field that's what i'm talking about to start out a game here with time bobber again clearly making the right calls early in this one let's see if we can make another one stepping up are you serious thankfully the offensive line bailed us out i just gotta keep throwing it to bobber that's all i've confirmed in my mind what a catch blitz in our face got it off bobber did the rest that was good stuff from the freshman here an impressive drive down the field and security with all the five stars coming in we're seriously about to turn up but how on earth can we turn up if the offensive line is failing to protect any of our guys bobber tried to put it in five star right tackle no doubt will be a big piece but we have three receivers that are gonna be lighting up this offense now that i'm thinking about it that trio is gonna be scary down for the record books at weber state 17 14 grizz doing a good job battling it out but so are we we have one more drive at least both seven and three units i don't doubt these teams are capable of going the distance in the big sky i'm just surprised we're here at this point looking back bobber's way what the overthrow into the hands of the dp just cut him off sigh of relief it's not over new life for hall and team here took it down to the two minute warning we're gonna go ahead and use this as our final drive putting it all in line so much so i'm still gonna hand it off on third and five because i was gonna go for it on fourth anyway now a fresh set to breathe just a little bit we'll take it 
and bobber is that dude strongly believe this is a breakout performance from that guy and i expect big things going in to next year for sure call me crazy i'm gonna qb neil down by three we have to plunge it in i just don't want to do it with a lot of clock left if we don't cash in that extra down is gonna haunt us under 30 seconds though i'm comfortable snapping it i'm comfortable just gonna dump it out here to ruben uh-oh fourth and goal no one's messing around here it is all on the line and bobber none other than the man the myth himself have a day young man a heroic sight from the young gun just need to hold on for seven more seconds good news is we don't care about a field goal we only care about the touchdown which this is it the final shot get everyone back there no good we win upsetting the grizzlies here at home honestly a good game through and through david hall got his team down there and finished it of course player of the game well deserved well earned all of our points today weeper state is breaking out as a team here in just year two more signees and good news around somehow some way at the end of the season we got gypped out of the big sky championship game it's gonna stay in the state of idaho Bengals versus vandals they got less losses than us in conference play so they're gonna go ahead and square off at least we got ranked in the top 25 with shaquille waller taking the heisman home for wisconsin I'm interested to see how our guys did on the stat sheet, but hey, we got the military bowl against Navy. At six and six, they got in there. They're no sleeper defending a bowl. That means a lot, of course, to the United States. Surprisingly enough, quarterback play wasn't all that impressive. It's the run game with guys like Ruben leading the way. Even more so, I think the defense is a big piece to credit. All in all, timely football got us this far. What about splashing onto the scene in a major way? Ninth best class in the nation five five stars three four stars 11 three stars hold on now we cooked blowing the big sky slash pack 12 here out of the water we might have lost the military bull but oregon lost the biggest game of all michigan ran it back going into the offseason transfer portal all the fun stuff we got bumped up one whole star absolutely huge and it's even bigger when only four guys graduate one wants to leave doug cross does look pretty good for a dt and I could not persuade it. All you gotta do is just win, baby, because clearly good things happen. And now we got access to three-star transfers and a lot more choices. Coupled with that, it's a love story. We have more hours. Aggressively gonna pursue a lot of these three-stars, including Micah here, a freshman quarterback, 85 speed, 91 excel, 92 throw power. Clearly a lot of good choices here, and most of them are still pretty young. Cherry on top, went out and got our guys. Lots of them at that. Young, vet veteran like everyone except quarterback Micah. The big sky and new look Pac-12 about to be in a lot of pain. Not another team got any five stars or four stars. The offseason continues with a lot of our guys taking the gym seriously up to an 85 overall. Dalvin Hall keeps doing enough to just keep the job even though the stats are not impressive. Big second year leap though from Deron Kramer that's my guy and I'm excited to see so many players crack the 80 overall threshold. Let's get a glimpse at some of the guys we brought in that very well could be part of the national championship squad. Lots of young quarterback options, but welcome impact Dakota Darling to the staff. Already passing Raheem Mond as a true freshman. Absolute scary receiver room now led by guys like Monty Hatchet, five foot seven Tommy Stork, and elite Caleb Harris. Sleep on Weber State offense at your own peril because Kerry Goodwill star tight end is a security blanket as well. We wanted a better line, so we got guys like Arma and six foot six Ferris to change the game. Ben Yarborough, nice addition. And then how can I forget about about our second five star in a row at cornerback. It's star George Parizo. One last look at the quarterback room. So many young guns, but I think I've been neglecting Jesse Lacey a little bit. I saw Raheem Mon with his abilities, but Lacey's got 88 speed, 94 excel, 93 throw power, and good accuracies. He's a complete package. Excited to see what he's about, just like I'm excited for this new recruiting board. It's a Weber State dream. Upgrading one full star in prestige does wonders. You got guys like Gordon Long, four-star corner number one interest man i love this class of guys including gordon long the guy who was interested in us the most not a gem but guess what 99 speed a must cop and then of course sprinkling guys like conrad josh amaro 97 speed receiver strong and beefy offense alignment i think we got the right guys to fill the needs of the team ahead of schedule we should continue to take the next step in year three so let the game begin with a ton of first team all pack 12 and can't forget second team where santiago damar we have first team and second team running back i did not show you gerald bass but i probably should have five star gem free 
three safety. Of course, we're gonna throw the house when TCU is the only one pursuing. The team has enjoyed a fast 3-0 start, beating Northwestern, Wake Forest, and San Jose State. That leads us right into conference play against Cal Poly. This is another team currently one and one, but they've done a good job building a sustainable program in the big sky, just like us. Hatchet, unfortunately for them, they're not quite like us. Get sauced on first play. Freshmen and underclassmen across the board battle and the Wildcats are on a mission. Weber State is here for real. Just a couple of years ago, we didn't have many options to choose from, but now I got options galore. Sophomore Radigan hauls that one in. We're up two scores already. Offense isn't the only unit making a leap up. Safe to say our defense is scary, no doubt about it. I mean, look at the pursuit. Look at the pressure. You're not going to win. This is a fun team, fun atmosphere, great place to be. If you want to win, you come to Weber State. The growth and progression is just unreal. Like you cannot make this stuff up. Hall and the guys were like 60 overall. Now they're balling for their lives out here. Just having a grand old time. Why not let it fly to hatchet? He hauls it in that young dude six foot five machine he's gonna be unguardable for the rest of his career i got a knack for spotting certified dogs and he's definitely gonna be one of them guys all said and done i just feel bad for this conference straight up they have to go against us first and 10 working our way into the red zone white blur scrambling out to our right we got options galore out here it's just who do i want to throw to why not go to rat again it was all said and done a long time ago 41 to 13 i'm sorry cal poly but on your turf we're gonna do you like that and dalvin hall is in his prime five touchdowns huge huge swing for gerald bass the five-star gem safety is loving what he sees from the wildcats i don't have the biggest sample size as i've only done a couple full rebuilds after the patch but i feel like recruiting low-key is easier even though yes more schools are clearing off guys from the board but I'm having success with four and five stars with underdog teams. As excited as I am for the five-star gem, 99 speed corner gets me jazzed. Four-star gem receiver too, just add them to a lethal room. Calling it now, this league's over. Winning at the red turf is a tough act, so I'm gonna cut them some slack. Thankfully picking up wins against Sacramento and UC Davis, leading us into a matchup against Montana State. In more years often than not, you just can't count out Montana State. The verdict is still out if this Montana State team, this year, year is worth anything because at one and six i'm expecting us to win all stepping in looking for an open receiver someone's gonna spring free there we go running back in motion just gonna hit hatchet across the middle got all day here in terms of protection so hall is just gonna step up get the first down himself just like that we can go ahead and lob one up to the back there he is rat again back at a rat again on occasion we get some snaps here from some of our receivers like stork in his direction things got a little funky we're down here nine to seven way to hang in there battle not gonna take us too long to correct wow radigan's like that i can just call his name and he will respond just like number six the og wipler's been here for a minute and uh he is staying anchoring this core have i already mentioned to you guys that this radigan fella is one heck of a receiver. Number 19, repping one of my favorite numbers too. Two common sights here, red zone action and Radigan looking for six. Did not pan out, so let's just give it up to Ruben who parts the sea. Fourth and four, of course, going for it because the game is on the line. He steps up and does it himself. Touchdown, Bobcats, but it's too late. 35-16 from number 20, Weber State. Road Warriors getting another one done. How about the Wildcats? We were calling his name all afternoon. No surprise here. Continuing to tour every opponent in the big sky, it's the University of Northern Colorado. Football is definitely not a primary focus out here, but that's all gonna change in the year of 2031. Sweaty defense, an eight and one record. Yo, this team is cooking out here and they're bringing the heat. Third and 33 is bonkers. Opening drive, I can't even bear to gather my belongings and I'm already throwing interceptions. This Bears defense is crazy. Next level, the way they're playing right now. Got that out of our system. We finally have breathing room and I got a wide open man. Let's hit him in the corner. He stepped out. That is very uncharacteristic of Rad again. So I'm going to try it again. And I guess they got their sights set on him. So I'm going to have to look for another receiver. Leave it to Hatchet. 
Freshy, number eight, do your dance. Into the red zone once more. Strike across the middle battle is always going to war for us. Now we are talking. This is the Weber State of dreams, man. Put it in. Backup quarterbacks becoming running backs, making their dreams come true. The city of Ogden, Utah, seriously must be proud. Their team is legit. You seriously can't forget Northern Colorado's 8-1 and one after all. Nothing else was needed to say. 44-19. I think the Bears just got opened up a can of wood. All they're going to see in their dreams are Wildcats. Another 9-3 successful campaign leads us to the championship game against the Vandals. Although this is super cool, our sights are set on on the biggest stage, the playoff dance. So with the Vandals running out of the tunnel and our Weber State Wildcats looking to make a statement, the fate will lie in the hands of the AI. Let's see what the computer does. Quick start here, 3-0. Vandals did strike back and they're starting to get some points of their own. I expect a back and forth game. There's a lead. The second half is underway, down by four. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Idaho's pulling away. I think the Vandals are going to do it with that insurance touchdown at the end. So congratulations to the Idaho Vandals. They played hard. They're ranked. They're a good team. Not that great of a performance from Charles Randall. Good enough for the ship, but I think that proves to me Weber State still has a year or two of development in them, which is good because we're here way ahead of schedule. Our team gets a bid to the Cure Bowl in Orlando. Let's see if we can pick up that 10th win. Before we get there, this is a look at the bracket. I see a lot of familiar names, but I also see like Utah State, Syracuse, Tulane, App State, a few underdogs too. All things considered, another successful class for Weber. And despite dumping the bowl game against Eastern Michigan, I like what Dalvin Hall was able to do. Monty Hatchet ate up them yards as a true freshman. Radigan soaked up those touchdowns. Weipler in battle consistent. Whereas the defense turned to big page. Nate over here, 13 sacks, two interceptions. That should be good for defensive player of the year candidate. All said and done, it was an overtime thriller between two teams familiar with the biggest stage. Georgia, Alabama, 47-44, dogs roll absolutely bonkers and the lift we needed the transfer portal is free game and you see it i see it we have access to some of the best step one look for all the four stars add them to our board number three rashawn moncrief yes please great step two add some of the best three stars available and then naturally you just relentlessly go after them you send the house still have not confirmed this belief but i go ahead and double dip on the guys i really want and then you just got to sit back relax let your recruiting staff take care of this good news we are landing some of the four stars we're looking after winning the race on a few. On paper, this next year with training results looks like a maintain year, but let me tell you, it's far from it. Jesse Lacey has stepped up into the big league. Honestly, he's earned the job. Better accuracy, better change of direction, better speed. Why wouldn't I go with this man? Santiago DeMar is going to give us a speed boost at running back, and then watch out, here they come. Now sophomores, all ready to burn. Secondary looking spiffier than ever. I kid you not, this team's ready to compete. Probably not this year, but next for sure. New freshmen have arrived on camp and it's an endless supply of talent. From six foot five, Eric to impact Josh, he's 97 speed, ready to go. More star tight ends. I can never get enough of these guys. Add more bricks to the wall, Greg Erbach. One of the steals of the last class, Jamie Jolly. We'll have a joyous, jolly time running around that offensive line. Brian Ferraro with his arm brace looking mean. The pride of this Wildcat defense is definitely the secondary with 99 speed and depth everywhere. The freshman we just brought in is normal dev, but he's 99 speed so uh I'm cool with that. Very bottom of the chart, it's Brian Trueblood. He's a star, but my man is literally 12th or something. Gerald Bass was obviously elite dev when you're a five-star gem. I don't got enough good things to say. There are more recruits than you can shake a stick at. They all want to be Wildcats. The question that looms large, is this going to be the year we make it to the playoffs? It all starts against Boise State right here in Ogden, Utah. And I feel like I just have to come out and say it. This Wildcat team is packed with some real ammunition. First team and second team bids. Did you know it was possible for two quarterbacks on the same team to get first and second team? Well, after a successful spring game, Lacey has won the job. On the recruiting front, we're packing five stars. And it's rare to get a five-star gem. But how about three of them? We're 
we're already rich in this department and Christian Lampkin would spoil us. Looking like a tight end build here, should do wonders. And then one of my favorites here, Jamison Lefeged, 97 speed, 98 jumping, 90 spec catch, six foot six, 202 pounds out of Frisco, Texas. Of course, as usual, gonna go after four star gems. Time is just ticking until we hold up the ship. A tough opponent here in the Boise State Broncos, let's defend Ogden. Night game, stadium's buzzing, Lacey in for his first collegiate start. He is a presence back here, and he's got countless options like Goodwell to work with. Not to mention a really experienced running back in the backfield. I totally get Boise State is legit this year, but so are we. Fireworks shooting off in the background. It's getting crazy out here in Ogden, Utah. Looking for an encore on the second drive of the game. Let's give it off to Stork, the speedster. The incredible thing about the trio to the right is that they're all sophomores up in here, and Stork's gonna get right down to the one. To me, we definitely should be pushing it up the gut. There it is. Touchdown. Our secondary is the no-fly zone. If anything, we just need to improve upon the front seven. I suppose giving up a touchdown happens time to time. We're not gonna get in the habit of doing it that's for sure just gonna go ahead and burn right past him that is the stork effect you're not stopping it dude this guy is nice with it five foot seven size does not matter got the broncos on their knees fourth and five they get the quick slant off but when it comes down to it 35 to 7 that is a deficit i don't think i would like to come back from we'll send the home fans home happy here just able to ice it out with a couple more chunk plays that'll do this is a mean group of wildcats 35 4 14 Broncos headed back up to Boise, Idaho. About a four hour commute, I believe. Safe to say I'm feeling really, really good about this year. And I'm feeling even better about the season with five stars on the way. No better feeling. Lampkin is just the first piece. And there we go. Not one, two, three, five stars and gems. It was a good year after all, like I felt it would be nine and three though. We have a knack for nine win seasons. Northern Colorado got to play Northern Arizona in the conference championship. For the bowl game, we're off to the Venturas Bowl against Cal Poly, so it's an in-conference matchup. Very happy with this foundational year Jesse Lacey put up. I think it'll set him up good for next season. Our top three receivers, Stork, Hatchet, and Goodwell sophomores, honestly pushing Wipler the senior out of the picture. Happy to say Weber State secured the Venturas Bowl, but our eyes are set on the biggest stage. Next year, more than likely with the talent we have, is the year to make a run. In recap, a 10-win season is our best yet. UC Davis had our number, but no one else really did until we got to the very end and lost some nail biters to the two teams that played in the championship game. Still no Big Sky, or I should say Pac-12 teams making it in the playoff, but look at Syracuse beat Washington for glory. One player trying to leave us, and I don't blame him. Playing time in the receiver room, that's very tough to come by. He's willing to sit it out another year. I don't know what it is, but a lot of players really like the idea of Weber State. And if it couldn't get any better, Caesar Smoker, the third best player, another corner, we can bring him home. We are living lavish in the secondary. I don't think I've had a better group of guys until this rebuild. Another season goes by, another top 10 class from your Weber State Wildcats. Training results are here, 88 overall, 90 defense going into next season it usually jumps one to two more points another 90 overall caliber team i don't even know where to begin but how about 399 speed corners just looking at the quality of young guys we're bringing in as well as juniors in the top of our overall list clearly if we can't compete this year it's a no-brainer next couple years it's all ours that's obviously me trying to rationalize but with the team we got this is the season quickly 3-0 through non-conference play let's take a sniff test against the lumberjacks we are here at Northern Arizona, the Flagstaff, beautiful Lumberjack Stadium. Stork, you're not turning around. Lacey dealing with some early adversity, but the Gunslinger is going to show no fear even when turning it over. Our time has clearly arrived. We're too elite to hold down. And they are sure doing a lot of holding us down right now, but we will not be denied. Converting on the fourth, we're into the red zone. Going to hand it off to Amro. He tried transferring, but he's here to play. We made right by him. Got him out here on the field. Give it up to the transfer running back. Yes, sir that was nifty brazil is happy to be a wildcat feels like a long time coming but this team is ready to compete at the biggest stage if you were here in the first year you a real one because you would have seen how down this team was the dog days are over for 
the Wildcats. I'm thinking Weber State's here to stay. Surprised we even lost two games. What business does UConn have to beat us? Everyone else, it was a pretty sure thing until Northern Colorado had our number for the second year in a row. All we needed was fuel for the championship game as we spanked Montana. Again, decent numbers from Lacey, really good rushing from Brazil. Caleb Harris snapped, and the defense led by Darrell Shermer went crazy. Dion Kramer, where it all started, three interceptions, leading the vaunted second out here. Better yet, we managed to convince the committee to give us the last spot, the 12th seed. Congrats to Calvin Hooks and all, but I want it to be known we are going to war. It's a long way to the top and it starts with Georgia. Doesn't matter if we're a decade into the future, they're still as tough as ever. I don't know how much courage we have left in the tank because we're already down 35-7. Unbelievable, man. This is going to need to be a comeback of all time. When you got dogs receiving on both ends of of the field you let it fly to those dogs and maybe just maybe they are the hope this team needs Lacey will never say never and what could have been there the defensive collapse is really what needs to be studied giving up 44 points is insane how do you expect anyone to have a chance does not matter if we have miraculous plays like that go our way 51 14 exited here in the first round what a joke a couple players like deron kramer paving the way for weber state getting drafted to the nfl fernando santiago i see you as well leveling up in prestige we're bigger badder than ever more hours and more recruits to work with for Get everything else you've heard this is in fact the dream team so much so we converted receiver josh amaro since we're loaded there to running back and that paid off 96 overall 97 speed it's crazy it's stacked literally no flaws i can't think of any going across the line 80s 90s defense 90s 80s linebackers in the high 80s corners especially this secondary is ready to go the roster spoke for itself this team's clearly the truth we're ninth ranked in the nation nine and oh let's just get a little sneak peek teaser against the vandals really a full circle moment for this team the vandals beat us in our first ever game at home and now look at us Lacey and the wildcats taking on the vandals in the kibbe dome that's right they are back and in college football 25 just ignore that blatant uts logo up there and it'll feel just like the same dome you remember absolutely cracked stars under everyone essentially i don't know why 90 overall tight end doesn't have one but stork harris hatchet amaro lacy and the offensive line they're pretty much just saying beware whenever you're taking on the weber state wildcats i'm sorry this is gonna be a route yeah we're not gonna stick around the kibbe dome at least we got to say we saw it but 49 28 i'm just holding you guys back from the playoff run that's inevitably about to come jesse lacy this is the season of destiny ain't no way we have a flawless season beating number five arizona state who actually just got a bid to one of the top four spots in the playoffs and then smoked the entire big sky before losing by a touchdown to the lumberjacks that historical choke took us out of the top four seeding and made us a nine seed where we're gonna have to travel to norman oklahoma plus we gave the lumberjacks a playoff berth and they're gonna take on georgia good luck we had to do that last year i still and corrected though arizona state is a seven seed looks like tcu leapfrogged them in their conference championship game brian melvin pulled away with the heisman but our guy couldn't have been far behind with these stats he put on a show 3800 yards 46 touchdowns josh amaro proved he's a good running back looks like he's injured though right now so that's not good whereas tommy stork and caleb harris had an amazing senior season defense was certified led by sua yamini 11 and a half sacks and then a nine and a half piece from jamie jolly i'm seeing another injury symbol so that has me out to believe the conference championship game could have been swayed because of these key injuries four ints nonetheless from george three from smoker and yeah just good textbook defense a snowy oklahoma sooners are getting ready to go it's cold out here fans are amped up as ever it's the first round of the playoffs it's cold the weather is not ideal let's use everything to our advantage though because we are born for this trust me Lacey and the team they're used to snow days out here in utah oklahoma gets some time to time but it's nothing like what we deal with it's a trio of nfl bound receivers out here let's go show them what they are made of in fact the tight end is going to be one to show here we go third down let's go ahead and hope we get a step on the db 
No, actually, our receiver could not adjust. The snow slowed him down big time. To be honest, it's difficult for both teams right now. It's into the second quarter. We're looking to get the first points of the game. We got it, Stork. Seven. That seemed to open things up as the scoring has begun. 14 to 7. Mr. Stork again. Five foot seven speedster shedding all defenders. It's a question of who wants it more. We know what's at stake. We know what's on the line. First and goal. Let's pound it in. No questions here. We have to represent for the big sky. Way to hold it in, Harris. Jesse doesn't care that Oklahoma is one of the most storied dynasties in all of college football they might have been here the longest we might be one of the newest that don't make a difference about this year's roster and especially he's five foot seven stork i can't get over the fact this man is like darren sproles height yet he is one of the most electric receivers in the nation this game's becoming a route 35 7 oklahoma just doesn't want to play anymore they don't like the snow like we like the snow fourth quarter looking to put a pin in it let's go ahead and hit the big tight end he's got a step and that's ball game we're so on fire that no snow could cool us down most people would think ground and pound all the way through in these conditions but jesse out here before throwing that interception through for five touchdowns in 450 yards i just wanted to give them the illusion that they had a chance 35 24 final kneel down we are headed to the next round had it locked in since the second quarter even though they beat us in the championship game i'm proud of our lumberjack friends who just took out georgia if we can somehow get past the toughest team in this bracket we'll get a date against either tulane or nau for now it's the iconic rose bowl seriously no other team as iconic as the ohio state tried and true a winning tradition proven formula meet the new kid on the block back against our own end zone that's not going to stop us us from swinging early been prepping all week for this game thinking of the plays we could run chalk that one down as get it out of our playbook ohio state of course predictably brings a lot of pressure but you're not gonna have the secondary to hang with hatchet and gang i believe lacy is a good quarterback but single-handedly this roster out here will make any quarterback look like a heisman candidate sundays the nfl that's all i see when i look at these guys look like our best running backs not available still dealing with that nagging injury what is Harris doing just running nine yards out of bounds? On fourth and goal, we're going to introduce a new receiver out here. He's got a star under his name too. It's Stocks, and he's got it. I haven't seen him like all season. He's fourth depth chart guy, but he's still a dog, and he's young, fresh, ready to splash. Absolutely incredible how deep this roster goes. There's a dude we haven't even seen take the field at all. And he's a five star and he was that six foot six guy out of texas with 97 speed 98 jump i assume if all goes well and we win this year we will not even get a chance to see probably one of the best receivers to come to this program one of my favorite receiving and cornerback groups in any dynasty rebuild i've ever done when it comes to big sky football all we do is soar i can't tell you enough how much I've loved this rebuild. I mean, all of these guys, you can just see they beat everyone. Ohio State, the number one seed's looking like child's play. Sure, it's only the second quarter and I'm talking a lot of smack, but can you blame me when you have so much fun with all your boys? Like, I literally don't even care who's on the field. I can trust every single one of these receivers, no matter who I throw to. Hatchet just proving my point. Talk about 316 passing yards, four touchdown passes in just the first half. Go for five, five passing touchdowns. Everyone's open. I need nicknames in the comment section now. Like, what do we call this group? The offense is so scary. I just love Weber State and Big Sky Football, man. Ain't no way. It's personal now. 35-7. Last second here before half. I want six touchdown passes. Give it to me right now. Are you not entertained? Buckeye fans, I can only imagine the pain you guys are going through right now. It's got to be one of the worst days of your life but good interception there surprised he kind of stuck with it kind of embarrassing not to show up in the biggest game rose bowl victory for weber state 45 to 14. was hoping the lumberjacks could pull it off but tulane took care of it so we got number four versus number nine in the semifinal, and then on the other side it's penn state tcu weber state nation ogden utah fans of the wildcats nationwide this is what it's all about here semi-final football chick-fil-a peach bowl winner gets to move on to 
the national championship. And it's not gonna be easy. Tulane is a scrappy bunch, got some drippy uniforms. I'm expecting things to crash as the waves, get it, waves crash, so too will their playoff run. To get the party started, I'll go ahead and show you here, dumping it down the store, getting right outside the end zone. Calling for the stick here, we can step up in the pocket, just walk it in ourselves. The game is officially underway, 7-7, seven, seven. back and forth we go. I'm expecting a shootout, if I had to guess. And even worse, we're gonna go down 14-7. I don't know how they just picked that up and scored. Definitely came back to bite us, but not many defenders can stick up with wide receiver Stork. So one play, one strike, it's essentially Tyreek Hill. We're back within a score. Let's go ahead and see if they have learned from their mistakes. We'll take it in front, right back to Stork. Maybe we can stretch the defense thin here on this play, a little stick up to the tight end. It was all clustered up over there, bad idea. Now this could be a good idea. I don't know, let's find out fourth down sure handed he's got it no way we fight into the semifinals and not take chances i mean you gotta do it if you're trying to win it all a couple other receivers step in here to spell for some tired guys and when you got stocks and other stars coming in off the bench you're in awfully good shape look at hatchet just burn the db and finish the job muscle him out and tie this thing up before half it's not often you see this but that's right we're running the rock going through brazil finding a way now that pace momentum game script everything's back on our side we can take our time with it two straight runs rpo i'm gonna pass it for the third there and walk it in touchdown i never underestimated two lane I really did not. I knew this team would be a force to be reckoned with. But our objective here is clear. Run out the clock and do it here with a ground and pound attack. That should allow us to chew the clock down to the two minute warning and then get right back to feeding Brazil that ball, which he has been doing a great job today. Picking up tough yards. We're gonna actually run an RPO here. Look who got free, it's Harris. That is a mistake. You sell out on the run, I will burn you either way one more first down and we can end this game brazil has got it and some why not go for the dagger forget all that we can go in victory formation and there's no shot i botch this let's get to the national championship game weber state great game and resilience from the group to fight back from a deficit and take home this trophy just one more to go without further ado here it is the national championship trophy and here we come donning the purple uniforms weber state wildcats you have have made the whole state of Utah proud. Even the Utes, the Aggies, everyone else there is in support today taking on the TCU Horn Frogs. What a run by the Frogs, man. They got all the way through. Penn State was their last opponent and they ain't looking to go out quietly. That's for sure. Lacey in this star-studded cast is sure as heck not gonna go out quietly in this one. So I'm just gonna come out and say it now. Let's silence all the critics. Let them know what we're about. That last drive was not our brand of Weber State football. I know that's right. And we couldn't really make things right on the second drive either. So let's punt it back, play some good defense. Our defense here needs some help down 7-0. The Frogs are back into the red zone, halfback draw. Looks like they picked up the first, almost. Need everyone to pitch in, contribute here. It's all on the line. Can't let runs like this just happen. Price and team just give up a deflected touchdown. Coach just got in and chewed his team a new one. We need a sense of urgency out here. Who wants to make a play? On that last one, it looks like we got Josh Amaro back from the injured reserve. He's ready to play. Almost transferred, but sticking around and becoming a star running back was probably the best thing he could have done. Now on the biggest stage, I'm looking for Josh to step up for his team. A speed dig across the middle. You ain't catching Harris. And now with 20 seconds left, I think we are in a good position to put this thing right into the red zone. I'll hand it off once to Brazil, see if he can pick up some extra yards, which he does. Timeout. Running a stick and audibling Josh here to go on a Texas route. We'll try it again now on the other side. We'll see if any of the linebackers by on their assignment. They do not, but that's okay. I thought Goodwill was gonna hang in. And you know what? I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna do it again. And he made up for it as time expired. Fourth down, halftime, touchdown here for the Wildcats. I needed it, a little pick me up. That's gotta be one of the gutsiest play calls here. And talk about another one, diving for a fourth down catch. You can tell Goodwill wants the trophy bad. He's made two insane grabs. Gonna send Amaro out here, leaving our receiver. Receiver Harris, I thought was open until that DB made a good read. Frogs turned it into points. Now it's fourth and 15. I'm hoping for a miracle out here. 
defense not going to give it to us but i hope you believe in miracles that's right a couple quick strikes and we're getting the punt return to go ahead and go for the win down by three it looked improbable as ever until our fourth quarter resurgence here can trust our safety valve josh amaro he once was a receiver still got a minute to play with i'm comfortable feeding the rock to josh as i know he'll pick up some good yards over the middle that's gonna spring free that is stork yes chunk play after chunk play we're gonna do it again handoff on the slip screen all the way down to the two and that's right i'm a bad man i'm chewing the clock and i'm gonna audible to an inside zone let's go ahead and snap it here up the gut walk it in could that be the difference i sure hope so now with the four point lead it is up to the defense to make the heroic save with everything on the line the best part is we just need to hold them out of the end zone i don't care about field goals i left my assignment here on purpose because they were going to choose so much clock just dumping that off go ahead and give cushion guest pass set him back on over the top here time's expired and he's gonna let it fly that thing's out of bounds so with that ball falling and harmlessly to the sideline give it up for the weber state wildcats rushing onto the field national champions in the 2035 college football playoffs it's never impossible when you bring a conference to the fbs as an underdog story just like these guys the worst in the big sky 10 years is enough for a coach like sir sponge to make a miracle happen fans are beside themselves ogden the city is going up in flames in a good way of course as jesse the senior goes off into the sunset well i hope you like college football 25 and i hope you're soaking it up with your boy king sponge if you are hit that subscribe button drop a like leave a comment down below what you liked most about this episode and of course any ideas for future team builders just like this it's been your boy and i'll catch you all in the next